What's going on guys? First of all, I want to say thank you to all of the truckers out there. Virtually everything that we buy from food to consumer goods to washers and dryers to televisions is delivered by a truck. So hat goes off. Thank you to all of the truckers out there who are making the deliveries, who are making it possible for us to get our groceries, for us to go to restaurants, virtually everything that we have and need is delivered by a truck in the United States of America. So what I want you to do is to watch this video from the beginning to the end, because there's going to be some very juicy information for you at the end. All right, a few, a few days ago, I made a video about trucking and a lot of people chimed in and a lot of people were talking about it. And I want to say shout out to all the people who chimed in. We had a lot of people and this is something that was weird. The video intention was trucking was the rage. And let me explain to you what was happening. There were many people who were selling trucking courses with the intentions of you buying a truck, hiring a driver and sitting back and collecting passive income. That was the point of that video. I wasn't talking about people driving for a trucking company because right now there is a ton of recruiters who are trying to recruit truckers to drive for companies. And I guarantee you, you would have not had someone pay 1500 to 5,000. There's actually one course, $50,000 to go out and get a truck. But th this new course is, they manage everything. They, you know, you get the truck, uh, you get the truck, they hire the driver, they run the little boards and you just collect money. But essentially that has fallen upon his ear. Now there are many of you who are, once again, thank you for the contributions to the discussion, but you're not reading the other comments because in that video, I have tons of people who said, hey, I was in trucking as an owner operator and it didn't work out for me. Literally, comment after comment after comment, which echoes the theme of the video. So once again, um, to go out and drive a truck for a trucking company, and this is why I said thank you to all the truckers. Trucking is a hard lifestyle. It's a hard business. I did find um, the guy, not your average trucker. He actually isn't on YouTube that much because he has 30 trucks. He's been in the trucking business since 2007 and he paid cash for his first trucks because he was coming out of real estate. So he had the money to buy his truck cash. And I think he bought two trucks. So not your average trucker is someone who's in the trucking business with paid off equipment and a good lifestyle. So once again, honestly, if you came into trucking right, and let's have this conversation because this is a conversation that I know a lot about, even though I know not a lot about trucking. I know about starting a business and to take your average trucker, not your average trucker, that's the name of his YouTube channel. He started off his business with a lot of cash. So he was able to go out and buy his trucks in cash. So he didn't have a truck note insurance DLT. He didn't have all that stuff. He just had the regular business of trucking. And this is one of the things that has killed. I mean, just psh, 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 killed a lot of truckers you, you're, you're a trucker, right? You got your CDL, you've been working for a trucking company, maybe five, six, seven years, you decided, hey, I wanna have my own business. And the first thing you do is you go out and you get a truck on credit. Because trucks during the pandemic got really, really expensive. So you go out and you get your truck on credit and your truck payment could be 1,500, 2,500 per month. 1500 per month is $18,000 a year. 2500 per month is $30,000 a year. So you as a truck driver who work for a trucking company, you've been driving trucks for years, 
you know how to drive a truck. There is no argument there. You know how to drive a truck over the mountains. You know how to drive a truck over low grade. You know how to drive a truck. You know how to manage a truck. You know how to park a truck. Here's where things got really, really difficult for a lot of owner operators who have never, ever run a business. And this is the thing that's killing people because yeah, you know, you've got your CDL, you could go ahead and get a truck, you can go ahead and load up, but you've never run a business. And I have a lot of people in the comments, it's like, hey, I'm doing fine, I'm making, congratulations, that's good, you're doing great. But once, once again, I have literally seen all of the trucking course commercials disappear, literally disappear. Because once again, I make myself really clear, I wasn't talking about that these people were advertising that you could go ahead and get your CDL and drive for a trucking company. Once again, that, that's a very hard business. That's a very hard lifestyle. And you know, once again, salute to the truckers, salute to the people who make it possible for us to get all the things we get. Because if it wasn't for truckers, um, we wouldn't be able to do the things we were doing. And trucking in itself is never going to disappear. Trucking as a baseline commodity in our United States economy is never going to disappear. It can't disappear unless we get to the point where we could teleport stuff. Trucking is not going to disappear. We need trucking for grocery stores. We need trucking for furniture stores. We need trucking for literally everything that we have in a store or online. Any way you look at it, it has to get there by trucks. Now with that, with the, what I feel, and this is once again, this is me speaking theoretically. I feel that the trucking industry got oversaturated with owner operators. Once again, many of these courses, many of these courses uh, was like, hey, you could go ahead and buy a truck, you can go ahead and get a driver, and then you can run logistics from your home and you can never drive a truck. Now, this is one of the things where I believe, once again, his YouTube channel, not your average trucker, he was very, very smart. He actually got his own CDL and he knows how to drive his own equipment. And he comes out and he drives his truck. You know, people are like, hey, we don't see you driving that much. As an owner operator of a trucking company with 30 trucks and a lot of drivers, he don't have to drive if he don't want to drive. But once again, he has the capacity to drive any of his trucks because he went to CDL school and he knows how to operate his own equipment. That was 100% wise, whereas the people who were selling the trucking courses was like, you don't have to get a CDL. You don't have to drive your own equipment. Now this is what's funny. I don't have a CDL, but I can drive a semi. When I was in the military, one of the trucks I was assigned was a semi. And they were like, can you drive it? And I got up in it and it was one where you had to shift the gears and I got in it and I started driving it. And then I started driving it on uh, the deployments and I started driving it in other countries. And it was uh, a flat, I don't know what it's called. It, it didn't have a bed on the back, was the, whatever that truck's called, a flat nose or whatever. But it had a 53 foot trailer that had tents and other equipment and stuff on it. So I know how to drive a truck. I don't have a CDL. I cannot legally drive a semi on the highway, but I know how to drive a truck. And that's one of the things that if I was crazy enough because once again i'll talk about it i am never ever 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 getting in the trucking business because that's just not my type of jam once again if you were great if you were brought up in the trucking industry your father your grandfather was a trucking industry you had a trucking company and you also learned through being part of that system how to operate a trucking company because Here's the thing, and I'm gonna say some things and maybe some of you, you truckers, please chime in, let me know in the comments. But I feel if you're gonna start a trucking company, you need a minimum of $50,000 in business credit. Minimum. Because you can, you can have a used truck that has a lot of miles on it and you'd be out there doing the load and that sucker breaks down on you. Until you get that truck fixed, the income producing side of your trucking company is done. So you got a truck that has to go to a shop, 
has to be fixed in that time. Let's say it takes them four weeks to fix your, fix your truck. For four weeks, you cannot make money. That, that's critical. That is extremely critical. And this is why, you know, and I, I've had people in the comments saying, you don't need a lot of trucks. You can have one truck. Um, once again, thank you for the comments. I appreciate them, but I'm, I'm about to say something here. If you are a trucking company and you only have one used truck, it's a, not a matter of if your truck's going to break down. It's a matter of when your truck's going to break down. And when that truck breaks down, the cash producing asset of your company is done. And this is why I said you need to have three to five trucks because if one is down, you got two running. You have three trucks. If one is down, you got five trucks. You got four running. And this is this is this is the business side. This is the business side because there's once again uh, hats off to you guys. A lot of you know how to handle a truck. You can handle a truck in Iowa, in Kansas, snow on the ground. You can handle a truck. There is no disputing that you guys know how to drive trucks. There's no disputing. You got your, your gears and stuff. You've, you've been doing it for a while. But do you know how to run a business? Because once again, I have been able to read a lot of stuff and there have been some larger trucking companies that have run into problems. And I'm going to say it. These trucking companies did not have a sales force. They did not have someone in there in the phones calling up vendors saying, hey, we can haul your vendors because like the, the low board and I've been watching enough trucking videos to know the low board could be garbage. The low board could be serious garbage. And as someone in the comments said, what's on the low board is the leftover stuff that they couldn't get a contract or it, it just literally got stuff that got thrown out there or these companies didn't have enough trucking capacity or um, whatever it is uh, when you pick up a load, they didn't have enough loads to actually set up a um, contract. They just had loads here and there. But once again, the load board is just just garbage. And there's another guy just trucking. He's in South Carolina. Uh, he has a wife, he has three kids. He, he literally has his whole lifestyle on YouTube. And at one point, he literally parked his semi truck and drove Uber. And a lot of people came after him and said he's not a real trucker because he did that. But here's the thing. Um, just trucking South Carolina. This guy makes a lot of money from YouTube. You, how do I know? I was watching his channel when it began and I saw it grow and I saw the toys that they bought. The, the motorcycle, the big trucks, the Hemi. They bought a lot of toys because they were making, I would say this guy makes 10 to 15,000 a month from YouTube when he's really rocking and rolling. That's a lot of money. That's actually more money than a trucker makes. You know, I have no clue to what he's making, but a lot of people have been talking about him because he's not a trucker who goes on the road and beats away from his wife and family for weeks at a time. He chose to operate in certain lanes where he could pretty much be home most nights. And a lot of people kind of took offense at that because, you know, there's a lot of trucking channels on YouTube. And those are just two that I used to watch because I felt that the content creators were entertaining, personable, and I enjoyed watching their videos. But here's the thing. With trucking, in a lack of business experience. It's just a matter of time before you're going out of business because here's the thing, you, you go ahead and get your truck, you got your own truck, you got your own authority, you got your own expenses, you got your own bills, but you don't know how to run a trucking company. Once again, I, I'm gonna say it again, I'm being repetitive. Yes, you know how to drive a truck. You know how to drive a truck. You got your CDL, you know how to shift those gears, you know how to drive a truck. But the intimate details of running a business setting up trucking, having financing, getting these large credit lines, because this is one of the things I noted that a lot of these large trucking companies are buying new trucks. They're prepping for the future. They're not prepping for now. And this is a, in my opinion, a very wise business move because with what happens when you have a trucking company and a lot of trucks getting a lot of miles on them, 
they wear out. They get to the point where they break down. They get to the point where they're just not doing that well. So you know you have to buy new trucks. And they're buying these new trucks because once during the pandemic, 20, 2020, 2021, parts of 2022, you couldn't get trucks. You couldn't get supplies. You couldn't get these things. And now that trucks are back on the lots, they're buying them up and they're buying them up at a pretty, pretty blustering rate. So that's a business move because, you know, let's go ahead with not your average trucker because I think this guy is hilarious. He's funny. And, um, check out his YouTube channel, not your average trucker. You know, he, he isn't putting out a lot of content because he's enjoying that trucking life. But this is where I look at this guy because, you know, if you look at his channel, he started flipping real estate, doing flips, and this gave him the money to buy trucks cash. I don't know if he's still flipping real estate, but I do know that this guy is a really smart businessman. He bought his trucks cash, he set up his company, he hired drivers, and he knows how to run a trucking company. He, he knows how to run a business. And that right there, that's the thing that's just killing so many people who came out their truck, who were working for a trucking company, decided to buy their own truck, run their own loads. And I would tell you, if I was crazy enough to start a trucking company, I would go out and hire a dedicated salesperson. Let's say, I, I like if I was going to start a trucking company, what would I do? I would not buy one truck. I would start with a minimum of three trucks and I would start off with my own. I would have a warehouse. I would have a warehouse place to park my trucks and dock. Because see, there, there's so many things you could do with trucking. Uh, I need to get back into some of my earlier details of when I was running the upscale garage sale and selling stuff. I had a warehouse because here's some that I don't really think I went into on YouTube. I used to sell brand new furniture and I had to figure out a way to package it up to ship it by trucks. And one of the things I found out is that when you take the furniture and you you create a pallet, because once again, I've also worked in warehouses and I noticed that these guys who drive these forklifts, they just cram stuff in these trucks. So it's very easy for things that are not properly packaged to get broken and easily messed up. So one of the things I had to do was to build a crate, take a pallet, an extra long pallet so that they could, and it had to be a fairly new pallet. It couldn't be an old pallet falling apart. And I would have to build a crate around the furniture and take excess boxes and box this stuff in. And this is the only way that this furniture got to the customer not destroy it because I created a special crate, but I also had to have a warehouse. I had to have dock hikes. And essentially we got to the point where we were able to ship furniture. Cause I remember we, we, in the beginning, we had issues where people would get stuff and it would be broken. We would have to get refunds and everything, but the profit margin was so good back then because like I sold a bedroom set for $5,000 on eBay after fees and the expenses of furniture. I was making $1,500 to $2,000 just like that. So I kept doing it. And one of the things I had to learn was how to pack my furniture so it could be shipped to the customers. And there, there, there was a whole bunch more details because one of the things I had to do was work out with, you know, like deliver the furniture from me to a local warehouse that was near the customer and then have a drop ship service, go pick up the furniture and take it to the customer. That worked out the best. But typically with trucking, if I was gonna start a trucking, I would have a minimum of a three bay warehouse. I would have minimum three trucks. I would go out and buy three trucks instantly, hire three drivers, go ahead and have a salesman who was beat on the phone I would be on the phone and my salesman, we would be on the phone eight hours a day, eight hours a day, calling up people, getting as many contracts as possible because I already know what's going to happen with the low board. The low board is they're going to hit you with the low ball. They're going to hit you with the low ball. So I would spend time and once that, that salesman started to get enough contracts and stuff going in, then I would hire another salesman. Then I would have three or four salesmen and then we would operate once again in a certain lane we would operate with a certain capacity and this is one of the things that you would have to do to start a trucking company 
in 2023. You would have to do this. You would have to get dedicated lanes. You would have to get dedicated loads because if you're just out here on the load board, your income is very, very unpredictable. And then with the price of gas skyrocketing and all this other stuff. And once again, like for me, you know, there are many of you who do trucking, you enjoy trucking, you love it. That's a great business. Hats off to you. But for me, that's not something I would want to do because I know of the overage. And this is something that's come by with the car rental business. The car rental business, I have three cars left out of 31. And the car rental business, in many regards, was kind of like trucking because I had extreme maintenance costs and expenses. It was insane that was going on. So, you know, that's how I would start. Minimum three trucks, warehouse, and a salesman. So I would literally have four employees and I would have to get it up and running very quickly. I would have to get it up and running quickly. And more than likely, what I would have to do is like, look, we're just getting started up. I'm going to pay you, you know, minimum, whatever you, you know, I'll pay you 1500 bucks a week, even if you're sitting at home, just to reserve that driver, because that's one of the big issues with trucking as a owner operator, going out and getting drivers. Drivers change jobs left and right. They'll be at this company for six months. They'll be at this company for six months. So that's a big issue with trucking. But once again, you know, look at the comments on that video. And I'm going to include the link for that video under this video. Look at the comments. I've had plenty of people who were owner operators who said in the comments that they sold their truck and went to drive for a trucking company. So there is something that's going on with trucking. And for you guys who are fortunate enough to be operating in a lane where it hasn't touched you, congratulations. I hope it keeps going for you. But here's the thing. The reality is with all of these people selling trucking as passive income, that's the key. You just get a truck, hire a driver, and do minimum work on the back end and collect a check. That was the selling point because they weren't trying to sell, go work for a trucking company. That that was nothing, that was, the language was nothing like that. And one of the things that I, I saw consistently was you can go ahead and get a truck, get a driver, and be making this passive income. And there was another, I cannot remember her name, but it was her and her husband that had a trucking company and they were hilarious. They were kind of funny. I, I'll have to search for her. But one of the things with trucking as an owner operator is the owner part. You got to get insurance. You, there's so many things you have to do as an owner that is above and beyond driving a truck. You have to get proper financing. Like once again, um, right now I have probably... $750,000 worth of business credit. And I got half a million dollars of personal credit, which I'm not using. So I would go ahead and reserve lines of credit, not credit cards, but lines of credit. I would go ahead and take $100,000 lines of credit and park that in the trucking company because at some point I am going to need to have trucks fixed. And here's another thing about owner operator. Let's say I got three trucks and they're all hauling and I got my contracts are full, one breaks down. Guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna rent another truck to keep the money coming in. I'm gonna rent another truck. So that's the thing that has killed so many owner operators. And not to say, you're not good, you know, you're not bad people, you're not stupid. I'm not saying that, but you're unseasoned. You don't know how to run a company. You don't know how to run a business. And that's the thing that's gonna catch up with you sooner or later because there's, once again, I, I've said this maybe the fourth, fifth time. You know I drive a truck. You know I shift those gears. But there's pre-planning. There's financing. There's the setup. I just told you. I would start with a minimum of three trucks. I would have my own warehouse. Why would I have a warehouse? Because I, I would have a place where I could put a camera so I could have a camera on my trucks. I would not be parking my trucks and just any old where I would have dedicated parking spots. I would, and that's just the start. And I know that once I grow and get to 10 trucks, we're moving, we're moving to a bigger location because here's one of the things 
I would be doing, I would be running like several different things. I'd be having my salesman on the phone, calling up vendors to get contracts, and I would be looking at other things that I can do. And it would be really important for me to have a warehouse. Very, very important for me to have a warehouse because at times I'm gonna have trucks that I'm gonna have to do certain things with. So business credit, 100K, three trucks, three drivers, salesperson, and probably some other staff. That's how I would start a trucking company. I would not ever, 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 ever just be dependent on one truck because, you know, if you got a brand new truck, the chances of a brand new truck breaking down are pretty slim to none. But once that truck starts to get some mileage on it, it's some problem, you're gonna have a problem. I was watching Not Your Average Trucker and he had one truck broke down and they didn't even know how to fix it because they had to put these airlines in there. And that, that's one of the things. This is why you need multiple trucks. And once again, I'm not trying to piss on you guys who you, you, you're, you were in, working for a truck company, you bought your own truck, now you're your own boss. I'm not trying to piss on you. I'm trying to illustrate to you that the technique and the efficiency of knowing how to set up a business, how to create sales, how to run a business is the reason that these big trucking companies exist. They're not out there making money off the load board. They're having dedicated contracts, they have dedicated lanes. There are some trucking companies that only haul fuel. That's the only thing they haul. There's some trucking companies that only haul groceries. They have certain lanes that they're dedicated in and because of their size and the fact that they're so big and they have so many contracts, they can offer a better deal. Give you an example. You ever send a package by UPS? UPS to send one package can be extremely expensive. Guess what? When I was on eBay, I was selling stuff. Once we got to about 100 packages a week, we were able to send packages through UPS or FedEx quite cheaply. Like I remember the first time I went into a UPS store to send a package, it was like $80. I was like, good Lord. And then I remember once we got the UPS contract to send that same package, it went from $80 to $10. So when you have a larger company with more production and stuff, you can offer cheaper rates to your dedicated clients. And this is one of the things that happens with growth. And once again, um, there's many terms of you, you can just do one truck. Uh, I'm gonna sound dismissive. I don't think that you really, really wanna grow because here's the thing. If I was starting a trucking company, I would start with three trucks, warehouse and all this other stuff. And my goal would be to be at 10 trucks within three years. Why? Capacity. When you increase your capacity, you increase your income, you increase your chance for capacity. And I would be shooting for 50 trucks. Now I know there's a lot of conversations out there and stuff. It's like, hey, too many trucks. Uh, you, you can only have a limited amount of trucks. But once again, business because I would have a plan. I would have contractors and stuff like this. And the average guy, bless his heart, who drives a truck, doesn't know about getting on the phone, calling people and drumming up business. And that's one of the most important things that you have to do if you're going to get into the trucking lane, the trucking warehousing stuff. That's, that's a very important thing that you have to be aware of. That's a very important thing that you have to understand. Now, there are guys out there who have small and trucking fleets and they're operating profitably. They're making money in a smaller lane. Once again, congratulations to you guys. But typically, that's the reason that I feel that trucking has become this dumpster fire because there's just too many people in trucking. It's oversaturated with owner operators and shipping has come down. Uh, FedEx is closing down shipping lanes. Amazon is closing down distribution centers. So shipping has dropped. And I think the shipping, the reason the shipping went up the way that it did was because of the stimulus boost from the government that gave everyone money and people were buying stuff and it just created this mess of stimulus. Now the economy is receding back to where it was to a normal level. And now you have an oversupply of people who are in the owner operator space and there's just too many um, owners. Now this is funny. There is a trucker shortage. There's a shortage of people to drive the trucks, 
but there was an oversupply of ownership. And th this is one of the reasons that we're, we're, we're where we are. And, you know, as we go along, because I'm really excited to see what's going to happen in the second quarter of this year. First quarter, we were not in the recession. Will we be in the recession the second quarter? I don't know, but we're going to find out May, June, into July. We're going to find out if that's going to be our first recessionary quarter. And as we slide into a recession and recession, I think, is too harsh of a word as the economy slides back to normal and a lot of things starts disappearing. That's what we will see. But I just wanted to make this video because I saw a lot of stuff owner operators. People were not selling trucking courses to drive trucks for a company. I don't even know where you guys got that from. I, I, I just like, OK, uh, is this for owner operator? Yeah. It's for owner operators. It's not for, cause like there are plenty of trucking jobs. There's plenty of trucking jobs, but hey, uh, let, let's do this commercial. Hi there, my name is Glendon Cameron and I wanna sell a greater opportunity to you for you to go ahead and drive a truck for a company and to be away from home three to four or five weeks, maybe six weeks at a time. Go ahead and get, the, you see that commercial just ain't gonna work. It's like, wait a minute. The thing that was selling the trucking concept was passive income. You could go ahead and generate a source of income and not have to do the work. That was what was selling it. It wasn't like go drive a truck for a trucking company. They weren't selling that. And a lot of people who had trucks, who got rid of their truck, guess what they did? They went to work for a trucking company. Because once again, we're never getting rid of trucks or truckers or any of this stuff. So. One of the things I want you guys to do, and this is for the things that I'm setting up, is first the money course. I feel that's a critical component. I'm giving that to you for free. The second thing is the productivity course. And the, producti the productivity course <clears throat> is a very important course for you to do the stuff that I have coming because I got stuff that's coming out in June. I got stuff that's coming out in July. I got stuff that's coming out in August. I got stuff that's coming out in September. Virtually every month until December, there will be new training. And what I'm doing is putting out the systematic training. Uh, today, I'm gonna to be working on the productivity course. And what you wanna do is get in there because once I get that done, I'm gonna raise the price and I'm gonna start working on another course. I'm doing it totally different than I did it before because the money course is done. The productivity course will be done. And then we will get into some other stuff because there's a lot of stuff that's coming up. I can tell you I'm going to be working on something called a secret corporation. And there, there's going to be so many things that's coming up. So you want to go ahead and get the productivity course. I know the productivity course isn't sexy and it, 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 it's not that good, good, good sauce and all this other stuff. But here's the thing. If you can learn how to get things done in a systematic and orderly fashion all of the time, that is worth millions to you. So it's linked below. Go ahead and get into it because I don't know when I'm going to get it finished because I'm working on it today and this weekend. And then once I get it finished, I'll let you guys know who are on the email list. But go ahead and get the productivity course because it's got things in there let's call it Glendon secrets. And it's going to talk about a lot of things that are going to help you get things done, give you structure, organization for you to virtually start and do any kind of business. So this is going to be very helpful for you to get these things going, to get these things started. All right. So that's all I got for you today. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section, and I will see you guys in the next one.